Friends, may I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. First, a, a word, a brief aside about the gospel text that we just heard this morning. I am always grateful when the disciples express questions. This is a hard teaching. This is a difficult teaching. Who can accept it? It recognizes that the way of God, of which we'll speak a bit more in earnest, the way of God is difficult, challenging and stands in some ways on a, uh, and on occasion in opposition and therefore presents us all with a difficult teaching that is hard to accept. And friends, may I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. From store aisles and the stages of political debates to overseas airfields and national borders, or even the capital steps, we seem to see enemies everywhere. We as a national community speak of our opponents, those with whom we have an intellectual or political disagreement, as enemies, all too often worthy of our most forceful, violent even opposition. Our language is peppered with near-apocalyptic imagery as if Satan himself were leading the forces of evil to our door. So we have watched the heartbreaking news of store clerks killed and school board members and simple parents threatened over a simple four-by-six-inch cloth. And of course, we have watched hordes of Americans, thousands and thousands of our fellow citizens, desecrate the Capitol while beating and pepper spraying women and men protecting our elected officials. It may seem natural, perhaps even obvious, to say that our enemy is that person standing in opposition to us. And yet it seems that we have the enemy all wrong. For our struggle, we heard this morning, for our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. In this morning's reading from Ephesians, which Brendan read so well, we are reminded that our struggle is not with people. It is not with blood and flesh. It is not, <clears throat> it is not between Jews and Gentiles millennia ago any more than it is between Republicans and Democrats or Americans and Afghans today. Rather, the struggle is between and within us all. The struggle, first and foremost, is against that very power that projects us as enemies. Those forces that terrorize our communities with fear, demonizing this group or that, the gays, the Dems, the woke or the Trumpers, as immoral, unchristian, unpatriotic enemies. The very posture of enemyhood is a fundamental rupture of God's kingdom. It was Charles Winder, chaplain of St. Paul's School and one of our Sacred Conversation speakers last spring, who reminded us that God's kingdom, that beloved community that transcends nation and race, wealth and gender, that community of which Paul writes in his letter to the church in Galatia, there is no longer Jew nor Greek, there is no longer slave nor free, there is no longer male nor female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. That kingdom, Father Winder reminded us, is fundamentally a kingdom, a new society of fellowship and brotherhood in which the ancient divides are seen to be simple paper walls, fallacies that have tragically driven us apart. 
the truth of our heavenly kinship is woven into the story of God and humanity from the first words of Genesis to the last words of Revelation. The story of kinship is in fact at the very heart of the story of Jesus. Baffling as it was to the religious and political authorities of his day and even to some of his closest disciples, Jesus refused to live by the ancient divisions of his society, of all societies, choosing instead to see a brother in the face of a blind man standing beside the road or a tax collector climbed up into a tree. To see instead a sister in the face of a young woman reaching out to touch his cloak. A young woman concerned for her daughter sick at home. Or a young woman naked in front of him. Jesus lived a life of opposition, yes, but the enemy with which he strove was not the person beside him, but rather the very forces of division that prey upon all of our hearts. Consequently, Jesus routinely reminded his disciples and us still today that the real struggle is not out there, but in here within each of us, within each of our hearts. It is the struggle to remind ourselves that, that the person over there, the person across the table on the oppos opposing side of the debate stage or on the other side of the political aisle or the national wall is not the enemy. That is hard work, full stop. It is the struggle to remind ourselves that the person over there across the table on the opposing side of the debate stage or the other side of the political aisle or national wall is not the enemy. Just a sister or brother with a different value or a distinct need. Even in the face of the greatest oppression and opposition, Jesus persisted in this kingdom, insisting that even there the struggle remained within himself to see Judas, Pilate, the soldiers, and the chief priests not as enemies worthy of his fire and fury, but brothers and sisters in need of his grace and sacrifice. If there is an enemy within this moral and cosmic battle, it is us. When we adhere to the politics of division, we stand in opposition to, as enemies of, the kingdom of God. When we speak of another as a categorical, categorical opponent, rather than as a beloved sister or brother, we stand in opposition to and as enemies of the kingdom of God. When we advocate for violence against or when we simply listen to the advocates for such violence and when we stand for the barriers that divide us from, then we stand again in opposition to and as enemies of the kingdom of God. The challenge of the Christian life is not one of protection from the enemy out there, but from becoming an enemy ourselves. Said positively, the struggle of the Christian life is to live in rich and remarkable kinship with all people. Those known and dear to us, yes, but also those unknown and far from us, and especially, Jesus reminds us, with those whom the world would otherwise proclaim as our enemy. Love your enemy. Such a remarkable life of kinship, the kinship displayed not only by Jesus, but also by the likes of Dr. King and Howard Thurman, by Teresa of Calcutta and Tefiti Orongomai, begins with a steadfast committed commitment rooted 
not only in a vision of such friendship, but a lived experience of transcendent love. People the world over have seen the vision, but too few have experienced it in a real and meaningful way, which is why this place, this community of radical kinship, a place where Kanaka Aina o Hawaii and lifelong Michiganders can call themselves not only friends, but brothers and sisters. In a world filled with enemies, a community of genuine friendship, a community of genuine kinship is essential to creating and expanding the kingdom of God. No doubt there is a struggle and an enemy, but it is not out there. It is not a person beside you, against you, or around you. The struggle is within us. It is within each of us as we strive for the kingdom of God.